let's have a look at the Volhard titration method. So the Volhard titration method is um, relatively similar to that of the Moore method, but with a few key differences, it can be can kind of considered as one form of a back titration actually. So it's actually a back precipitation titration. A bit interesting. So let's grab that image of the titration we had from before. So this is the Moore method. For the Volhard method, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, not actually titrate in the silver chloride, the, the silver nitrate. We're actually just going to let it all go in. Okay. So what we're going to do is, you know, if we have a rough idea that there's around five, here we have nine. We're going to let all of them go in. All of them. All of them. All of them go in. Right. So if 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 uh, all of the silver, um, so I, I wouldn't even use a burette. I would just you know tip it in using like a conical flask, right? I, using like a burette. So I would force all of these guys to go inside, and they're all going to begin to react. So you know, we could pair some off. Um, we can pair some off. There's five. We can pair those five off. But you can see after we paired off the uh, five, oh sorry, and that's not the indicator that we use. So after we paired these five off, but we, we still added in these other four, right? So we still added in these other four. Let's see if we can do this bit. So we still added in these other four silver particles, right? So, um, let's kind of uh, summarize what we've seen about the Volhard method so far. So first of all, is um, so we put in excess amounts of silver nitrate, and that's going to cause the reaction. This is the same reaction as we saw with the Moore method. Okay. Now. If we put in excess amounts of silver nitrate, what does that mean? Well, that, that means that we're going to have our silver chloride. And you can imagine that we kind of extract this, we can filter it out, or we can just you know, pretend that it no longer exists. It wouldn't really interfere with the rest of our experiment. Okay, So let's just kind of keep a log. So we had nine um, silver atoms initially. Okay, Now we have four. But, but the thing is, you know, we, you, know, you and I, we can see that there's four atoms, but, you know, as you do an experiment, you can't see how many atoms you have. So what we need to do in that case is we need to figure out how much silver is going to be in our beaker at the end. Now, how do we do that with another precipitation titration? So this time, what we want to do is we want to fill our beaker with... Um, KSCN, potassium thiocyanate. Um, you might have, you, you might remember this uh, particle from before. It's kind of like an orangey, um, it's like a faint orangey color, but you can't see faint orangey colors. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of like this kind of faint yellowy orangey, uh, faint, very, very faint white, or, uh, white um, yellow color. So you might remember this for module five, which is um, for, for the for for the um, equilibrium between iron and thiocyanate. And actually, interestingly, we actually do put in um, some iron particles. So we also have some change color. We also do have some iron here. So then the second step. I'll write down that the second step is so the first step is we put in excess amounts of silver nitrate. The second step is that we titrate the excess or the remaining AgNO3 with um, KSCN. And so there's going to be an, a, a, another um, reaction occurring, and that is this reaction. Now, finally, our indicator. So that our indicator is actually just iron. Uh, you can consider it to be like, is this an iron plus three iron? You can maybe it's maybe from like an iron nitrate, right? Um, and what's going to happen is that the iron is that the iron 
when it reacts with SCN, you probably would have seen this before, right? Um, in module five, it actually uh, creates iron thiocyanate. And these guys, this guy is colorless, this guy is mostly colorless, but this, as you've seen before, becomes a blood red, right? It's a deep blood red, just like that. So let's see how this reaction will, this how, how this titration occurs. So first of all, we put in the excess AgNO3, that's how we got the precipitation, and now we have the remaining silvers. So let's uh, begin to titrate in our um, thiocyanates, right? So let's have a look at this. So when you have your thiocyanate coming in, it's going to react with the silver. It's going to precipitate out. That's good. Now, at this point, all of our silver has been precipitated. The thing is, we don't know to stop yet, right? Because we don't. There's nothing to tell us to to stop. So in that case, we're actually going to keep going because our indicator hasn't flashed it flashed yet. Now, flash that up a little bit there. Now, because my thiocyanate and my and my iron have bonded together, we, we remember that that causes a color change. It, it becomes red. So this is actually going to become red like that. Fantastic. And so now we need to stop. So now what we can do is we can say, okay, I used, um, I used here, what I used, I used five SCN molecules, um, and we'll subtract one because one was just for the indicator. So, so we use four SCN molecules. Okay, so if I use four SCN molecules, how many silver molecules must there have been? Therefore, there must have been four silver molecules. Okay, so there are four silver molecules, and I had nine initially. So there's, there were, I, I used to have nine, and I only have four now. How many did I use? How many of my silver molecules were used up in the first step? Well, it must have been five. I used up five silver molecules in the first step. That makes sense. Let's have a go at putting this in a real question. So let's have a look at this example. Uh, a man has a zero, uh, a 100 milliliter sodium chloride solution, but which has an un unknown concentration. He has 100 milliliters of 0.2 molar so, uh, silver nitrate, such that the silver nitrate is in excess. He then titrates the excess silver nitrate because only some of that silver nitrate will react with the sodium chloride. There'll be some excess left over. Um, with the 0.15 potassium thiocyanate until the endpoint, which occurs at 34.46 moles. Determine the concentration of sodium chloride. Interesting. So, the first job that I'm going to do is, is I want to determine the, the moles of KSCN that we used. So, which is going to be CV, which is going to be 0.15 times 0.03446. It's going to be um, 0 0.005169 moles. Very nice. So this is how many moles of potassium thiocyanate that we actually needed to use to get to the end point. Okay. So if we think about the equation, we have silver plus thiocyanate, which gives us that. So if the moles of, th of uh, thiocyanate that we need to use is that many, so therefore the moles of silver that we must have had is equal to this number. So we, so we must have had 0.005169 of moles too, by a 1 to 1 the molar ratio. Okay, so we have that many moles of silver left in excess, right? So this is like how many moles of silver were left after all the um, original chlorine uh, was, was reacted away. So then the, the next question that I want to ask is, okay, well then how many moles of silver were there initially? Well, that's, well let's have a think about that, right? So we, it says that we add this much. So CV is equal to 0 0.2 times 0 0.1 is equal to 0 0.02 moles. And now let's think about this, right? And let's think about this. The moles of silver initially must have gone into one of two things. It could either have been used to precipitate with the chlorine, or it could have not 
been used and it's available as excess and then precipitated with the thiocyanate. So if we rearrange this equation, we should be able to get this equation. So what I did is I moved uh, this to the left hand side and rearranged for and rearranged. So let's see what our, so if we sub in, we have our initial 0.02 minus the excess moles of silver, which is this. And so our answer should be 0 0.014, uh, oh dear, 0 0.48 moles of silver. 0 0.0148 moles of silver were used. So this is the number of moles of silver that we actually used in the very initial um, titration when we mixed the chlorine and the silver. Right. So therefore, if we have a think about the reaction, then what we can see is that therefore, moles of chlorine is equal to 0 0.0148 moles due to the one to one ratio. So let's quickly run through that again to make sure that it all makes sense, right? So working from the top, right? I, I first found out the number of moles of potassium thiocyanate. Knowing the moles of potassium thiocyanate allows me to deduce, okay, this is how many moles of silver are left in excess. So after all of the um, chlorine and the silver have reacted, we have this many moles of silver in excess. We calculate the number of moles that there were initially, which is 0 0.02. We subtract them, and therefore this, this, there must have been this amount of moles that was not used, uh, that, that, that was actually consumed when we mixed the chlorine when we did the initial one, which is when we had the uh, chlorines in solution and we added in the silver. And so they reacted. So, so they reacted. And then any excess silver, right, so, so, so we had 0 0.04148 moles of them reacting like this. And then the excess amount of silver, well, that was how much we calculated up, up here. And then since this is how many moles of the silver we had to, to use by the one to one mole ratio, this is how many moles of chlorine we must have had. And so the concentration of chlorine is equal to moles by volume. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, that's it for Volhard's method. Also check out Fardan's method. I'll see you guys later, bye. We offer physics, chemistry, and math tutoring. For more insightful explanations like this one, head to tutorgum.com.